Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, January 22nd, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. Or is he? And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, a bit of terminal length, episode number 680, where we were all confused. But we also <laughs> have Dr. Edward Angelini Cook here. Yay! That's me. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> he can alleviate some of our confusion. Uh, we're still confused on whether Damon is actually Damon. Uh, Damon, what yes. one? What one? What one? Blah, 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 what one best musical at the Tonys last year? Bitch, you're asking the question that I don't know the answer to. Uh, oh, he's a clone. He's a clone. Oh God. Oh. Oh, I know this. No, I don't. Last year. I know what won this year. Or was it a strange loop? Wait. There you go. Okay. Oh, I had to think for a second. I had to think. Wait, I had to stop and think for a second. Oh, wait, we're in 2023. So totally last year was the last Tonys. Okay. So if this was a clone, <laughs> would a clone be this authentic to Damon's personality? I mean... I'm just saying. I'm not really sure. I don't know if that if that's a possibility. I mean, depending on how quick the clone was created, no. <laughs> Forty three fucking years of life in this brain. <laughs> that's right. gonna take a minute or two to download. All right. So we get we <laughs> we we got the uh, musical question. Uh, I'll give the uh, different question. How about the uh, uh, this? Uh, can a paladin take the disengage action as a bonus action? No. That's true. <laughs> Only rogues can. Wait. Ooh. Mm. Wait. Uh oh. Mm. No. Somebody no. did the Megan dance. Monks can as well. Yep. That's right. There it is. I had to think for a second. Like, wait, 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 wait. All right, Gary. Gary, how about how about a? <laughs> let me look down at you. God uh, damn it! <laughs> do, do you have a drag question or something? No, I don't have a drag question. I have a. <clears throat> what is the name of the daddy in Chicago that you've been lusting after for years? <laughs> oh. oh, okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like. That. Fuck you, Gary. <laughs> 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 and it can kind of Tundra. It can kind of go both ways. Yes, yes, yes. Son, Daddy Gary, Chicago, Daddy. Oh God, what is this this thing on? I forget what it is on. I forget what his Twitter handle is. It's not important. But yes, it's well, please we let just, me know what it just is. Just making fun of something that people won't really get. But in any case. Yeah. Uh, this is this is a landscape of relationships episode. Let's focus on that, Gary. Now that we've gotten the the, the more like the what the fuck section out of the way in the beginning of this episode for the rest of our audience, uh, yeah. So Dr. Edward Angelini Cook is back with us. Um, we haven't talked. It's been a couple months. It was no it problem when we last chit chatted. So we've had holidays. It's a new year. Anything oh of, of import to, to update us on? Um, 
Not really. Um, went to Vegas, had a terrible time uh, due Ooh. to a bacteria infecting my husband. Um, but but was able to have a good time at the RuPaul Drag Race Live. That was Ooh. Uh, that that was lovely. Um, everything else was a big poop sandwich. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, That's about it. And we just booked a yeah. we just booked a, a cruise for October. Um, we're going on an oh. Arno Bear cruise. Mm. Oh, that's in October. Yeah, well, one of them is. Yeah, there's usually Dallas one or two Texas. a year. Huh. Because I have been looking for things to do on our honey for our honeymoon. Oh. <laughs> it's also somebody's birthday. Well. That's also my birthday month. Yes, that's also true. Yes. Mm. Interesting. Anyway, I will look. No, keep going. We we must keep on topic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, speaking of one sided relationships, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we're gonna circle back to this. <laughs> Ed, I think you wanted to talk about something that uh, in the pre-show we were having this debate about how to reference it called parasocial interactions. What, yeah, what is so, this um, thing you're bringing to us? Yeah, so um, basically we're going to be talking about uh, parasocial relationships in the landscape of relationships, but they are um, um, uh, they come about through parasocial interactions. So um, a parasocial relationship are one-sided relationships where one person invests time, money, energy, um, uh, interest, uh, where the other person is completely unaware of the other person's existence. Wow. Um, these are like these are really common with celebrities, um, organizations, television stars, and media and social media. Um, and these are created through parasocial interactions, um, through mediated encounters with performers through mass media, like, like I just said, like through, through movies, through books, through, um, uh, through social media, um, and that's kind of what I think we're going to talk a lot about. Um, so does that like, make sense? Oh yeah, totally. Like my infatuation with Daddy Hadrian before I met him. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. that that might apply maybe. yeah um Awkwardly. yeah i was actually thinking a lot about how like parasocial relationships with like you know uh, like social media creators like content creators um mm -hmm. and um uh, i think we're gonna have some really interesting conversations about the positives and negatives of parasocial relationships um and um social media adds this other layer where like movies, TV, stuff like that don't because um, it adds a layer of interaction with these um, creators, these performers through um, likes, comments, and direct messaging where you don't have that with other, you know, like we have like fan mail and stuff like that. Um, but this is more um, instant interaction with a, um, with a person. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So the, if, what I'm getting, if if I'm getting what you're saying, like this is sort of like you follow a uh, influencer, mm -hmm. and you're liking all their things, and you're kind of like that, and you suddenly be create this relationship with them where maybe you're buying all of their merchandise, or you know, every video you're watching every video, and that's creating this like. Some like you're you're creating this in your mind that this is this is some kind of like I owe tribute to this person. Is that a good word? Yeah. 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 Um, that's fidelity. Mm. Um, and so there is a word um that can be used for this uh, called a leaf a l i e f because there is a part of us cognitively that knows that this is a one-sided relationship that they don't like, this isn't like a, 
a friendship, quote unquote, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But there is this feeling like it is, and that feeling is called a leaf, right? Um, Which is which is really interesting. You know, there are definitely people um, like even last week. I went to go see Strange Loop um, before it closed again, and uh, Michael R. Jackson uh, took the role of Usher, um, and I sent out a tweet, and he retweeted it, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, (laughs) right? Like, you know, I, and I even said, I don't know you, but I'm proud of you, right? Like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, so it's like, you know, I don't have a real relationship, quote unquote, real relationship with this person, like I have with the three of you, it's this like affinity uh, for them and the, what what content they have. Right. I think it's that you have a connection to the person, but it's yeah. not reciprocated. Exactly. So like you have an, um, an awareness, a fondness, a, you know, a connection with them of some kind, but it's not mutual. And the so the reason why I suggested this topic was surrounding the whole Taylor Swift concert debacle, um, oh. and also the the release of her latest album. Um, there's a lot of content out there talking about power social relationships and Taylor Swift. Interesting. Hmm. But I guess she. It, well, I mean, oh, I, I was guess just going to say sense. that. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say that, like, um, like her and, like, other, like, music industry people, um, like, take the concept of parasocial relation or parasocial interactions, and they capitalize on it. Well, that is interesting, right? Because I think that's what we've what we've done with celebrity, I think, especially um, in the current context of celebrity. I guess it's always kind of been this way, but, like, we really feel that we have this relationship with them, but it's mm-hmm. definitively one-sided. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, like one of the earliest modern age representations, I guess, of that would probably be like when the Beatles came to the U.S. And like, you know, teenage errs, presumably women, like lost their minds mm-hmm. um, with infatuation, like to the point of like, you know, like, I don't want to use the word hysteria, but I don't know what else comes to mind. Um, you know, with that's a fair word in a sense, kind of, but it, yeah, I, I, it is one of the things like we would call the, the cost of fame as it were is like strangers somehow feeling that they know you like, you know, we've we've heard the stories of celebrities like having dinner or being somewhere and like someone like kind of like sitting down at the table and trying to have strike up a conversation with them like they know them, like they've known them all their lives. And that's like, no, you 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 don't know me. I, you may know a fragment of me that is, you know, the persona or whatever I have out there, but I'm not just that. And maybe that's what your infatuated with or have formed this connection with, but I'm not that person. And on the flip of that, um, there's what you were kind of getting to about this whole like capital capitalization on these kind of relationships. There are people, especially, you know, I mentioned influencers and stuff like that, but there are people out there that are using this, the platforms that we have out there, to make these faux connections. You know, they paint the videos out there, you know, they're they're kind of making it feel like you're sitting at their table and talking with them or, you know, going on these elaborate trips with them because they've shown you so much of what's going on that Mm -hmm. you become, or some people, not all of us, but you become sort of like, just feeling that you you know them well, and then you can use that, like you, you like you said, you're using it to sell this product or sell, you know, your next movie or sell that you know thing that you do, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. 
Well, I find it interesting because I think there's many layers of it. And I think it's about like, uh, it's just like, like, I don't know if people would understand this, but like we were talking about celebrity, but like you can do that even, I think, within your own community. Um, like I think about how like there's an artist and people are like, oh, I love seeing them perform and I follow them online. And like, you know, I go to the local gig where they, you know, have this, they do these things. Um, that's one level I think about how, like when you're probably, uh, going through puberty and you're a teenager and you kind of become infatuated with someone, um, Mm -hmm. who could be like a counselor, a teacher, a coach, um, you know, that you, you, and, and this might be wrong. So like, let me know, Ed, like I'm thinking about how like you create worlds of fantasy about your relationship with said person when in reality, it's like, no, like they're an adult you were a minor <laughs> you are you are not <laughs> mm-hmm. in a relationship you know what i mean like yeah um no yeah absolutely like i think any kind of instance where it is a one-sided relationship um is uh definitely an example of power socialism another factor of this is um uh like proximity um so like the um level of power social interactions, right, how close they are, um, can also influence the level of the parasocial relationship or the Mm. intensity of it. So like what you were talking about, like people who um, say go to like they, uh, you know how we uh, we heard about like in the in the 70s and 80s, like people who would like follow the bands like roadies, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. Like, you know, people who um, some oh even like um when i went to the debbie gibson concert right like there are um you know people who like literally go to like so many concerts of hers um and you know she was calling them out during the concert which was really interesting so wow. it seemed like there was this like level of a personal relationship with um uh with her fans um which mm. was really interesting yeah. Right. And I, and I think that like we're all prone to the potential of like having these one sided relationships. Um, I know that like as I came out, I was trying to like figure out like my place in the world and determine things. There was a period of time. It was relatively short. Um, as a teen, I was going to somehow meet Garth Brooks one day and I was going to end up like convincing him that we should be together forever. Um <laughs> Wow. It's very delusional. It was, it was pretty much Sounds very basically. familiar. It was just very lust. Um, it was very <laughs> all it was, but you know, to be fair, back in the nineties, that man could fill a pair of jeans really well. Oh, um, oh I mean, he yeah. still can't now technically, but he's aging. Uh-huh. Yes, he has. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've given him permission without him knowing that he can be with me. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> But to me, like, that's an example of, like, like he had no clue who I was, had no idea that I existed, but I was a fan, and I, like, you know, followed everything I could and, like, bought all the albums and all that kind of jazz. Um, yeah, I, I think that's that's very interesting. I think, like, it's, it's very easy for us to develop these things, whether or not we have an awareness of them and can appropriately man, uh, maneuver them or, like, traverse the journey of understanding like yeah it's one-sided yep i mean like you know there are so many examples that we can um we can use like you know the one thing that i kind of put out there was um you know like uh like social media influencers but also like you know adult content creators um Mm -hmm. uh like you know levels of membership right like tipping on um on only fans and everything um right 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 uh, right like and even think about uh drag performers right like um that's another uh really good example of uh parasocial relationships um and uh and also it's really important to distinguish between a parasocial relationship and fandom mhm um yeah. Right. So like, you know, we're talking about like the relationship that we have with that 
thing, that person, where like fandom is like the the experience that we have surrounding an experience, like the the um, you know, like the you know, like being like a tw- uh, what do they call Twifties? T Swift. <laughs> Swifties? I don't know what they're called. Swifties? <laughs> Swifties, there you go. Yeah, like, <laughs> that would be, like, kind of like a fandom, right? The ha- you know, that uh, to use, like, Harry Potter fandom, right? Like, there are so many fandoms out there. Um, uh, okay, so, um, I think that we have kind of talked about a little positive. Um, like, you know, parasocial relationships aren't negative right like there are some positive qualities to this and we get these from a very early age um so you know some ways that this is positive is through identity formation right so gary you were talking about like puberty being like a really important time for us to kind of identify who we are so um so these like power social relationships they can offer us autonomy in in our own relationships where we can receive total acceptance outside of our parents and our family. Um, And it's like the first time that we can get that, right? Um, It's kind of us like first, our first step outside. Um, And they also provide secure relationships without the fear of rejection. Um, Like in a perfect world, right? This is what they, um, I guess, you know, not to throw throw shit out there. This is what they should do, right? Mm-hmm. And it allows us to feel part of a group, right? Um, mm-hmm. And it allows us to um, practice empathy, right? So like some um, through learning, right? So some examples of this are um, like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, right? Uh, Sesame Street, Dora the Explorer, uh, Blue's Clues, and like a recent example would be Bluey right like these are the um the relationships that we have with these characters um where we can kind of learn what it is to be like a person right (laughs) right how to interact with others it's interesting because i'm thinking about like um mr rogers like I I don't know if you can have a parasocial relationship with a fictional character. I it's possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it's possible, but there's a part of me that's like the fact that the character is fiction, and I'm thinking of like the examples that you were given, like Bluey as an example is an animated like dog, and so like. I don't know how, I mean, you could have a one-way relationship, I guess, with them, but to me, it's a little different dynamic than an actual person. Well, I would think of it like as a young, if you're younger, this isn't necessarily like, like Bluey is like a, I think would be a younger parasocial thing because you may not necessarily know that Bluey isn't real. Mm. Exactly, right? Think about it, like, like, you know, yeah, he's he's animated. Until you see the uh, big old fluffy Muppet that walks right. around in, in in person. Right. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it, it's... Go ahead. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, it, we, you know, to even uh, Santa Claus, um, Mickey Mouse, right? Like, all these characters, right? Like, when, you, when you're little, right, you go to you don't really realize that there are like five Mickey Mouse, right? Um, that are around. Like you think that what you're seeing is, you know, is Mickey Mouse, right? Like, so, um, you know, you do have these kind of relationships with these, um, with these characters, right? But as we get older, right, that translates to more realism, mm-hmm. um, realistic people, real life people, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's that's when we start to develop relationships with Jojo Siwa, right? Um, or like people who are on Nickelodeon. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's mm. you 
and you can like again you know as you get older like you said puberty is a perfect kind of example like if you saw are you because i it's the one that came to mind like r carly i forget who the actual actress's name is but like like our uh carly uh cosgrave there you go ran no ran a cosgrave anyway whatever so you, yeah. you you kind of fall for her. Like you're she's your like thing and you see her and she's acting on, you know, and you kind of develop. I think it could start simply as like a crush. And then it kind of builds from there into infatuation and then moves on into a mm. bigger sort of like I don't like using the word love, but that's the word that comes to mind. Well, so so something else, um, like in the field, you know, obviously that I am, right? Um, You know, trauma is a thing that a lot of kids go through, right? So like sometimes the the only example of a a secure relationship that they can have is going to be on TV, right? right? It's going to be... Um, you know, what does, what did Bird Bird say today, right? Like, mm-hmm. remember what this character said, right? Um, you know, those are the examples of secure um, things that we can point to that yeah. can kind of mm-hmm. help us be resilient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking it over. <laughs> I guess... The the thing that I'm probably getting stuck on is like the levels mm. and how it can be how it can not be good at a certain point. Well, we will. Um, so you know, so we're talking about kids, right? But like you know, as queer individuals, right? Like identity formation is also really important. So you know, think about when we were um, coming out um, and when we were kind of realizing about ourselves and we can identify with a specific person, right? Like that's also why representation is really important, right? So we can have positive representations so that we can develop these parasocial relationships um, with queer individuals that is, that are positive, right? That are, um, that are helpful, right? For us to feel like we belong um, and they can, motivate us um to form relationships with with other people right so like that also happens and you know that and that can you know that that can be people who are um uh you know out in the public right like celebrities um but sometimes you know that's gonna be um you know a comic book character or a you know, somebody from a book that you really identify with mm-hmm. or a character, right? Mm-hmm. Something that, that they're going on that you really um, identify. But, so, like, there's a part of us that can realize, like, Gary, what you're talking about, but, like, we know that that's not real, right? Like, um, you know, when we get to a specific age, like, you know, um, you know, this isn't real, but there's that elite that is like, but it feels real, Right, this relationship mm-hmm. feels real, even though I know that it's one sided. Um, so yeah, so those are all like positive outcomes of this. But like, what do you think are some negative outcomes of this kind of relationship? Delusion. <laughs> wow, girl, delusion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there Woo! there has been okay, this Ariel, thing that's let's, that's let's happened. These type of things called stalkers. Yeah, I think it, there's that that point when it gets to obsession. Um, mm-hmm. Are delusions actually? As I was thinking, like, that's a really good word. Where you believe, like, this relationship is real. Like, this is actually a real thing that I have with this person, and therefore, that that's that's who I'm supposed to be with are... I believe Stephen King wrote a book about this. I think he did. And what book would that mm-hmm. be? Mm. I don't know. It was miserable. Mm. <laughs> that work? I'm not sure. 
That might be reaching. I heard it was a smashing success, though. (laughs) Dirty bird. I couldn't walk away from it. Oh. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Points to David for that one. (laughs) Um. Yeah, I, I, I think that, um, I mean, if anything, I would say it's unfortunately more emotional than logical. Like, the negative outcome of, of a parasocial relationship is that you are far more invested emotionally than probably, like, in the real world or factually. Because you think you have this thing that isn't technically mm-hmm. accurate. And mm-hmm. most likely the outcome of that will be negative because there's going to be this discordance with reality versus non-reality. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, um, go ahead. Yeah. So like one of the, um, the top things, one of the top like outcomes of this is body image. Um, that we can, that, so there's research that has indicated that there's a negative relationship between, um, parasocial relationships and body image, um, as well as self-comparison, um, and social comparison with characters, uh, that that increases negative body image. Okay. I can see that. I can totally see that when I was younger. Like, one of the things I've kind of commented on, I'm pretty sure, in the past year is, like, or even a couple of years, social media now, far more than ever, shows representation of myself as opposed to when I was younger, I didn't ever saw myself being represented. Right. Right. And that was, and to me, that was negatively impacting because I didn't see myself, so I didn't, like, understand that I still had value in existence Mm -hmm. makes sense i have i just i can see the body image issue because if you're if you have this mentality that this is a friend a lover what have you then you want to do whatever it takes to make sure that they like you and want to be with you so you may go to those extremes to make yourself look or more attainable. Or and more you could potentially look more like them, like Right. That that skinny person is just so beautiful. I want to look just like them and then end up having end up being bulimic or something. Right. Right. Like that was one of the things I was thinking about a little bit. Uh, different than what Jeff's saying, but very similar, like that you see that that whoever you have this parasocial relationship with likes X, but you don't see yourself as X. So you start trying to be like X. Mm -hmm. So you take on behaviors or do different things, possibly diet, um, consider, you know, surgery, like whatever, you know, it is because you want to look like what you think they want. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of um, like influencers shape um, what we buy, right? So, like, that's, you know, that's their that, that's their job, right? So, like, <laughs> you know, they that's that's what they do, right? And we develop these relationships, so like, we are uh, subconsciously, right? Um, sometimes consciously, sometimes subconsciously, being drawn to these things because of them. Right. Um, and those are some, you know, of the negative sides of that relationship because, you know, that's usually not their intent, um, but sometimes it's a, um, uh, you know, uh, unexpected or unwanted outcome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, another thing with uh, these kind of uh, on the topic of body image is that the usage of filters in social media, um, like airbrushing and print media, has greatly increased, right? Like, you know, think yeah. about uh, all of that, but like that gives us false reality of these performers. Um, and then we only see this, cre- this created false version of them. Um, that we are trying to emulate um, and we're trying to get kind of closer to. 
um, that isn't helpful. I find that interesting because, hey, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Jeff, mute your, mic mute your microphone. Did they actually come through? Oh, yeah. Uh, not through the stream, but mine. Oh. <laughs> so um, one of the things I was just thinking about is like how for a long time, decades, uh, celebrity in print and then eventually like uh, film media, they didn't really have these filters, these concepts, because the definition was not that high, like the resolution. So like... Mm -hmm. As we progress technology, this became problematic. I was reading something mm. recently about how when 4K came around, how newscasters had to completely pivot and learn to do makeup in a different way because they had been putting on makeup for camera for standard definition, which kind of had that. It wasn't this, Eight. but we joke about the old Vaseline filter concept, like, you know, where <laughs> things were kind of like, you know, just smoothed out. But in standard mm -hmm. definition, like you weren't able to see the pores. You weren't able to actually see the makeup, quote unquote. Like they just looked like they had a certain kind of complexion that was very even. Right. But then when 4K came around, it was like, oh, I can see your jawline. Like I can see where you stopped applying your foundation. I can see that you have mascara on. Like it was kind of severe. And I found that very intriguing that like that those that worked in media had to like learn to soften, <laughs> to blend, yeah. to like, you know, uh -huh. do things because they were like this, like, you know, they look like clowns in some people's mm. eyes. Like, you know, it just didn't look right. It didn't look real. And so I'm thinking mm -hmm. about this, Ed, about how you're talking about filters. And I'm like, isn't it interesting that we've like, because the technology advanced, we feel it's not okay to look authentic. So we've got to manipulate it. Yep. Right. And here we come back to authenticity. Oh my goodness, right? That's a huge, that's a huge word. And uh -huh. um, to um, bring Taylor Swift back into this, I think one of the things that like she does really well with these parasocial relationships is she tries to be as authentic as possible with her fans um, mm -hmm. to like really mitigate that relationship. Um, and uh, also, another really great example is Lizzo, right? Like Lizzo is a wonderful example of how she uses the parasocial relationship um, for a positive effect, um, because her and and Taylor Swift both come from this like female empowerment um, and also like fat liberation um, mm -hmm. movement for for Lizzo and also like PC POC representation. Um, that these are really positive examples of um, how a parasocial relationship can be productive mm -hmm. well and what i find interesting is i've been learning more about lizzo is that um seeing interviews and different things one of the things that they've said as an artist was i never saw myself represented and i was also told that i couldn't be a success and look at me now like i am a success and i think mm -hmm. like it's very understandable how people would develop a parasocial relationship because they feel displaced or like they've been they've heard the same messages that Lizzo was told as a young like teenager as a young adult and mm -hmm. so they're like but look at them like they have success in their life be that whatever you know that looks like and I too can can achieve and or have that what I find interesting is I don't get the impression from either of these individuals as examples that they're trying to sell celebrity so to speak do you know what i mean like i don't i don't see them as like trying to be gurus on a mountaintop and telling these fans or fanatics or whatever definition you want to give that you know these that you too can be just like me like i don't i don't see that i think that's something they kind of say but they're i think they're very careful about how they phrase that in terms of like you too are beautiful you also have value but like you know mm -hmm. not saying like you know you also can you know win awards and be a celebrity and you know blah 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 yeah that's and it's also in the language that they use they use a lot of you language they use a lot of we language right so like really reinforcing this relationship that like you know mm -hmm. we are in this together like when um taylor swift will release you know i think when she released her fearless um, the Taylor 
um, version, like she made a post that said, look at what we did. We did this. This is for us, right? Um, mm. Which was really interesting. That really helped reinforce that relationship and like made them like the royal us and the royal we. Mm. Mm. Really cool, right? Yeah. Well, I, I, it's, yes. I'm thinking about how strategic that is. So that's where we get that whole capitalism thing. And that's where like Ticketmaster is fucked up, right? And where they're like, oh, we see what we can do here. We can like, you know, we can like flood the, we can like take this relationship and really capitalize on it. And like that blew the fuck up um, mm -hmm. with those ticket sales, right? And then Taylor had to come back in and write. And, you know, um, I'm, coming at this with a positive perspective, right? That um, she is really being genuine <laughs> in that like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to add concerts, right? That are just for these fans um, to help, you know, uh, help any kind of negative effect that people had with this. Um, but yeah, that's all kind of mm. messed up. It's interesting how it how it showed the flaws that were already known to exist um, yeah. in a system, but like really, I guess, kind of put a spotlight on it. And what I what I'm curious about is like, will this help create newer, better, effective like solutions, or is it just kind of going to be a blip and like nothing will really change? Mm. Yeah, um, I think that. Uh... I think artists like Taylor Swift and um, and Lizzo are really, and even Lady Gaga, um, they're really transforming the um, parasocial front, right? Um, because another part of like the the level of parasocial relationship is how how much interaction you have with this person, like how many posts they make, um, how how visible they are, how accessible you are to the that one sided relationship. Mm -hmm. Read. Yeah, I think it's interesting that, you know, people will establish these one sided relationships. Um, and then what do they do with them from there? Like, I see that in, in like Twitter. I see that like in, with individuals that aren't even celebrities, you know, they're like, you know, uh, one sphere or example kind of a bubble is like a bodybuilding. I see, you know, MSM who. Uh, I don't know if I want to say worship, but kind of look up to other people who, you know, have like transformed their physique um, and maybe went from, you know, being like, you know, 450 pounds to, you know, less than half their body weight. And they now mm. compete and, you know, they've really changed themselves and how that's like a whole thing that I didn't know existed. Not that I was ignoring it. I just it wasn't on my radar. But then when yeah. I started learning about it, I was like, oh, OK, I guess that makes sense that that's a thing. Um, but it has given me pause a little bit because as a person who's not in that, I wonder how far that goes, like that one sided relationship and, you know, how healthy that can be. Right. Well, yeah, to be continued, um, we're about to get into that. But the, the one thing so another thing I wanted to talk about is how um, with men specifically, Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a study out there that says that having a, a, a parasocial relationship with a su superhero is likely to protect your body image rather than negatively impact it. Um, where not having a parasocial relationship is likely to give a, um, is likely to, uh, have a negative body image. So like if you have a parasocial relationship with Batman, right? Um, you're going to feel good about yourself. But if you have, if you don't have a parasocial relationship with say like Superman, um, that's going to negatively impact your, um, your body image, which I think mm. is really interesting. It is interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I will. I, mm. Mm. I'm not signing on. Huh? You're not? No. You're not signing on? Well, no, because here's because the key thing we're talking about is body image. And I'm like, but if I don't look like them, why would I like 
why why would my body image be positively or negatively affected like whether or not i have a parasocial relationship with a superhero if the superhero doesn't look like me so like i'm thinking about this from like how uh kamala khan like made such a huge splash with marvel because of who they are and what they represent like the new the newest superheroes that have come about in the past decade or you know 15 years or so have been about representation that was not there before Mm-hmm. So I guess that's where I'm like, mm, I just don't know how I feel about this because like, while you gave the examples that you did, I think that can be understood, but at the same time, I'm like, but I guess from my viewpoint, I'm like, yeah, but how often do you see a fat Batman or a fat Superman? Do you know what I mean? Like, well, no, no, like, no. well th- like that's the thing though. Like these like bat, like the Batman and the Superman that we're talking to are like the ripped ones. Right. Um, but like, if you don't look like that, right, but you do have a power social relationship, you're less likely to compare yourself and be jealous about somebody that you have a relationship with. Where if I don't have a power social relationship with, say, Batman, right, um, I'm okay. more likely to feel jealous or compare myself to them. I think it's like, um, uh, like I put a note in here about hegemonic masculinity, um, that hegemonic masculinity is all about kind of climbing up that ladder um, and to to get yourself closer to that like ideal version of what a man is, right? Um, and, but if you already have a relationship with that, you're safe and secure with that. Um, so you're, you feel okay with that. But if you don't, hmm. you're more likely to want to claw, uh, claw your way up to them um, because you feel distant from them. It it makes kind of, it, it as you're talking about it, it makes sense to me. I get what Gary is saying, but I also kind of understand where you're coming from because it it it's sort of like you don't have to be them because they're already a part of your life. Yeah. If um, that makes sense. I know it sounds weird, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like you've you've created this relationship with this figurehead, I will use that word. But that doesn't mean you want to be them. You just admire it. It probably, but you don't. It does. It's probably more of and you feel secure the, in it. Yeah, removing the whole body image sort of thing by not being like I like them so much, but I'm not going to compare them physically to me. I just really like them. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess the part that's tripping me up is that you will have like that it will protect your body image or it will hurt your body image. That's the part that's tripping me up because I'm like, like, I'm like, I can intellectually appreciate a superhero. I'm just not understanding how that equates into that about my body image. That's the part where I'm like, mm, I don't know. Well, full disclosure, I, you know, I didn't, um, I haven't read this whole study, um, so no, it's be fine. I'm not picking it. I'm picking it. Right. You editor, like whatever. I'm not saying that it's that it's bunk or it's you know crap. <laughs> I'm just like eh, I don't I don't know about that. I'm not yeah, I'm not I guess. on it personally, but I'm not saying that people should poo poo it. I'm just like mm, okay. I'm not you're I'm not, not getting not, the connection. You're not you're you're not convinced yet. I hear that. Right, because I guess I have too many, like I, I have way too many other examples in the other direction. Like I was infatuated with David Bowie in Labyrinth as Jared. Like I just found that so fascinating as this like, m- like potentially malevolent, evil, like sort of sorcerer wizard character who ran around like with this bulge in tights. <laughs> And makeup and like, you know, kind of spiky hair. And I was like, but I don't look like that. Like, so to me, it was like problematic because like I wanted, I wanted to have that power. And Mm. yet at the same time knew that that was not possible, not only because it wasn't real, but also like I couldn't be that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense. Anyways, that was probably too much of me revealing myself as we were. (laughs) (laughs) What I'm taking from here is Gary thinks we need more uh, uh, bigger superheroes. But I could think of like Guido's strongman uh, from the old X Factor, second generation, oh, with the Havoc as the leader. Uh, Wrong guy. 
strong guy uh, something like that. I, I was trying to recall what it was because it's such a long time since i read anything of this uh strong guy there was the thing is kind of the on the huskier side of things as ben Grimm. Rocky oh yeah well and, and to be fair like and this is going us this is going off course but like i think about how like when um hamsworth portrayed thor yeah. Oh, fat Thor. And right, and everybody called it Fat Thor, um, as opposed to like depressed Thor or anxious Thor or PTSD Thor. Thor. Like we didn't give him yeah. any of those names. We called him Fat Thor because he sat around and he gamed and he got slobber, you know, slovenish or whatever. And like all the messaging that came out of that was like, you know, oh wow, that was the thing that happened. I sure hope he changes because I, I'm not comfortable with that. I don't mm. want to have a fat superhero. He needs to go back to like six pack abs and like lycra, and he needs to look less Lebowski and more like traditional superhero. We need more yep. su superheroes with chunk. Well, with a lot of things, but yeah. Anyways, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's totally like diverted away from the topic. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, since we're on the topic of superheroes, we can like shift to like anti, like you know, uh, villains, right? <clears throat> so there's also research that shows that, as far as aggressive uh, aggression goes, that more aggressive viewers um, are more likely to identify with um, aggressive characters and create. Um, parasocial relationships with them which I'm i think sorry. makes sense i'm sorry conservatism what tea party what <laughs> right <laughs> orange dictator wannabe what <laughs> yeah girl rock fan <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was getting to it okay okay I, I was like you better be grabbing that other one <laughs> that's interesting i hadn't even made that connection but it make, it makes so much sense it, it, makes, it makes it makes everything crystal clear about the the fanaticism, like mm -hmm. the the dangerous devotion, right. like of like believing in this like this theoretical concept of existence. Because, yeah. but this person represents me. This person gets me. This person isn't every man. No, they're not. Um, because, well, like we're talking about, this person don't even know you exist. This person has no, like, connection to you. You have a one-sided relationship with them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the thing I've always had this. I've, and, and God damn it, we're going to get political a little bit. It has been my biggest, like, irk with everything that's going on with, like, that went on these past several years. It was like, okay, you do realize the things that they want will hurt you like they will be detrimental to you no matter how many no matter how they spell it or spill it or turn it or twist it or whatever it's hurting everyone and that includes you they don't give a fuck they'll be in their well, the cowards doing their things and getting all their shit going and and collecting all the monies and you know all the you know cuts and whatever and You'll be still sitting in your house, maybe, if you are lucky enough to keep it. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that confusion is the hypocrisy. <clears throat> like, mm -hmm. that they will do things, but they get away with it and you can't. Right. And then on top yeah. of it, it turns into, um, like, I was just seeing this tweet recently that really was, like, it made me sit and think about it for a second. And it was like... Do you all realize that this, like, gender-affirming apparel, like, how you dress, like, it, it was interesting because this this woman who posted it, she's like, hey, straight women, pay attention. If you don't think this affects you, wait until they tell you you can't wear pants. And I thought mm -hmm. that was really interesting because they were trying to point out, like, you know, if 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 you think that it's okay that they pass laws – that mm -hmm. say, you know, that are pointed at the transgender community, that they uh -huh. need to be wearing clothes that affirm their gender at birth and not how they identify. The point was the point was like, you realize this will this will affect you to what you're saying, Damon. Like this will affect you. 
You like yep. wearing pants? Sorry, you're going to be allowed to wear pants because you're a woman. Women don't mm-hmm. wear pants. Like, mm-hmm. like that's that. And while some people may be like, oh, that's, that's extreme. That's the whole point. Once, yeah, yeah. once you allow, then where does it go from there? And I think that's where parasocial relationships can be dangerous because like you are sort of walking a fine line if you are recognizing that people have these connections to you and it doesn't like, and they don't understand that it's not real. Mm-hmm. And this is and this is where the discussion about power comes into play. That like you know these relationships, um, they are one sided, but like one of them holds all of the power, um, right. and um, well, not all of the power, <laughs> right? Like we have power, um, but like they they have so much power over the people who are on this other side of this relationship, and it's really important that these individuals be aware of that. Um, and that like, you know, January 6th is a really good example of how that power, um, was, you know, greatly abused. Um, and, you know, but like on the other side to bring Taylor Swift back into this conversation about like ways that, and also Lizzo, right. About how, that power can be used for for productive things, right? Um, and empowerment. Well, and and right. I mean, I, there's different levels and different gradations. And like, I was watching a YouTube video recently in which the person who I've on again, off again, watched like randomly over the past year or two, mm-hmm. made an interesting passing comment in a recent video about how they had to get a restraining order because mm. someone apparently developed a parasocial relationship with them. And went too far. And like that wasn't what they said, but that was the takeaway was that, you know, they kind of cracked a joke about like, you know, needing to have a have a, a a border or a fence around their their home or whatever. And they said something about, you know, how like uh it doesn't it doesn't keep people out. It just like gives you this like concept of, of protection or whatever. Um and they said I don't remember how they phrase it, but it was like a throwaway line and they were like, you know, um you know, about how they said something like, you know, don't make me get a restraining order because I've already had to do that. And I was like, Mm. whoa, I was like, that was a weird like thing to say. And and to them, I don't think they thought much about it. But my takeaway was like, oh, somebody has already like gone too far. Right. Like in their relationship that was apparently very one sided, like Mm. they, you know, went to that point. And so I think about like that happens with celebrity. Um, you know, that people become infatuated or they believe that they're in a relationship. Like one of the most famous ones was about, you know, uh, Jodie Foster. And right. this guy, uh-huh. you know, repeatedly over and over and over again thought that, like, you know, he was destined to be, you know, with her forever or whatever. Um, I, w- I, I would say, though, that I don't think that falls in the category of parasocial relationships. That is more extreme. Like, you know, when it when it gets um like that uh when, when when there's that much like delusion and and things like that i think that falls under something else <laughs> mm. that's fine i think it is a form of parasocial relationship it's not positive by any means i think it is the like further most extreme of right. something to me that's kind sure. of like um, I mean, this is this is horrible. <laughs> this just came up recently, weirdly, uh, with other folks. This kind of reminds me of like Jim Jones and like this, you know, kind of like Messiah complex. This, you know, mm. this strange like following, like people will give over their rational mind, so to speak, to do things because this person says this is the right thing to do. Mm. Um, yep. You know, and and what that can lead to. Again, I think it's a representation of a parasocial relationship. It's not a healthy one. It's not a good one. It's very extreme. Um, but that's what mm. I'm saying is like, you know, it's I think it's delicate to have, you know, a, a one sided relationship with someone or something and to um, not be aware of that, I guess, to not, you know, see it for what it is um, in that case. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so, so something else um, I wanted to bring up is uh, paras- what, parasocial breakups and grief. Interesting. Okay. So, um, you know, so we talk about parasocial relationships with, um, uh, 
you know, like real people, but like, you know, developing parasocial relationships with like characters and fiction is also a thing, right? Um, but like also in real life. So, you know, I know personally when Betty White died, <laughs> right? I was like, oh, I can tell you where I was, what was happening, um, you know, things like that, right? Um, mm -hmm. Even Stephen Sondheim, right? Um, I was really, really upset. Um, and mm. these are, you know, when, when parasocial relationships end, right, through breakup or through grief uh, or through death, um, they also follow the pattern of a relationship breakup or, um, or a bereavement process. Interesting. I think that's very logical, though. Like, yeah. if, you, if you've established what you think is this relationship, what you feel is a relationship with something, and then it ends, like, I think it's natural in our current capacity that the human brain has to work through that. And the, the way we typically do that is through, like, some form of grief, um, mm -hmm. remorse, some, you know, something to address and understand the separation. Right. And most likely the permanency of that. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is there's also a study out there um, where the study was asking um, people to pick one acquaintance that they have and one figure that they have a parasocial relationship with. Um, and they asked them a bunch of questions specifically surrounding, um, like, say, their death. Um, mm. And... Uh, um, women uh, said that they would feel stronger if the person, the parasocial relationship died than an actual acquaintance. But they also knew that they should feel worse about the acquaintance and shouldn't feel as bad for the uh, parasocial relationship. So there is some like that lot of uh, some of that like cognition they're going, I know that this isn't right, <laughs> but I still oh, feel that way. That's that elite process. Right. That, mm, I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Right. <laughs> well, I, makes... what, I'm, what I'm thinking about is like how people have one-sided relationships and sometimes you kind of don't think about them until something happens. And so, like, I think about, like, uh, this is really more with celebrities, that you find out um, that the celebrity is no longer married, that, like, they're going through a divorce. And I mm -hmm. typically hear from people, they're like, oh, so-and-so's back on the market, you know, or, or whatever. And there's a part of me that's like, okay, you're not wrong, but, but also, <laughs> like, are you considering yourself part of the candidate pool? <laughs> you got to really, you, you, that is very, that is a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> That makes so much like I I I understand the whole concept. I understand like like losing that person in some way, shape, or form, and how that could be heartbreaking in a sense. But I feel like maybe I would feel more about the real thing. But again, it's not really a real. It's a real thing, maybe in your mind. You know, it's a one sided creation created relationship that you have for, that you have created for yourself for one reason or another so i guess it makes sense that it would feel the same or even more so impactful mm -hmm. because we kind of what we've been talking about this whole time like these are things that sometimes we use to 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 feel better and in, in, in the general sense of things so it ending would feel like to feel like a part of you has ended in right. a way. And that yep. where I could feel that being the more impactful because something that you have created and developed in your, your mind is no longer, you know, relevant for one reason or another, whether it's like you, we, we've been mentioning death is kind of the extreme part, but like, you know, something happens maybe they've had a a you've learned more about them 
are some realists. Uh, we were just talking about this person. No, I'm not going to say that name. Never mind. Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> someone who has had a fall from grace, a fall mm-hmm. from the pedestal. Right. Someone mm-hmm. who, for one reason or another, controversy, controversy, what have you, and you have realized this and you're like, no, I don't want to be with them. It'll still be impactful. It'll still hurt probably in a way, but kind of this breakup side of it. It would feel less, it has the potential to feel less like a, um, like a real relationship ending. It has potential, but it could be. Yep. <laughs> well, and, and some people will take it to an extreme. I mean, look at what happened. Like this it tends to be more with like, I think musical artists, um, but I guess also with actors or whatever, like they make a statement, like they take a stance on something and then like fans, like, you know, they start burning things in effigy because <laughs> they're like, you know, how yeah. dare you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just kind of like, okay, like that's your choice to do that. You it's kind of expensive. <laughs> Like, you know, you spent money for that or someone gifted it to you and they spent money for that. And now you're just like, yep. destroying it. OK, that's that's your choice. Yep. Right. It's really it's I think it's really fascinating. Um, but yeah, like even with um, like other processes that we see online, like with social media is like canceling and doxing um, and like all of these um ways that people will process the breakup of a parasocial relationship um is like re- blocking right like i have even seen like in groups on facebook that i'm in people were like people would be like i'm leaving this group i didn't know that that uh that you all were like this or you know make some kind of statement uh, right. and i'm like you don't have to announce your departure this is not an, <laughs> um, an airport <laughs> like you can go like you have but no, ed Ed, it's all about them. How are you not understanding that as a person who counsels people? Obviously, they are the center of attention. That is why they have to make an announcement. They need to be affirmed in their decision. As long as they're giving me statements or I statements, it could just be venting. Hmm. I just love mm-hmm. how people say, I'm leaving like social media thing forever, and yet they never actually leave. Two months later, I'm back. I'm still here. And where's yeah. uh, Absolutely nowhere. Well, I, I think because they, they recognize the, the puzzle or conundrum that is social media, it allows you to stay connected to people you want to be connected to. Mm-hmm. However, the flip side of the coin or the the other side of the, the razor's edge is you also are going to be connected to people you don't want to be connected to or you're going to see things or, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, right, it, right, you take right. the good with the bad, so to speak. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you, it's not while you want it to be curated to your desire, that is not how it works. It is established to make money mm-hmm. and making money is about getting interactions yep and that's the fact i mean you know uh, for, <laughs> uh, <laughs> take the good yeah. the, um yeah. there's you yeah. know, a whole thing with the with the broadway community right now with leah michelle um which is really interesting uh because you know she's in funny girl right now and like killing it um, but like so many people are, uh, like upset with her for, you know, really valid reasons. Um, mm-hmm. so there's this weird dichotomy within the theater community surrounding that. Well, yeah. uh, right. I think that's always a challenge when you find out things about people and then you have to figure out, am I going to continue to support them? Or, like, support the things that they are involved in. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's like, oh, this person, uh, this is just a random example, this person is a Scientologist. Okay, (laughs) like, so do I watch them in things? Do I pay for them to be in things? Like, how do I, how do I maneuver that? 
Um, and we've kind of talked about this before um, in previous podcasts about this whole concept of like, you know, putting people on a pedestal and then like re reassessing later because you find out you're like, oh, you're a shit bag. Like, and right. I'm not OK with that, you know, and then you have to yep. figure out where to go from there. Um, Let, and I think that that kind of a breakup. breakup what's that? That is a parasocial breakup. Right. But that one is different because you have control or power in the decision of the breakup. Like you're like, I'm no longer going to support you or be involved in this or, or whatever, as opposed right. to it ending otherwise, because like you were saying, like the person has passed away or. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, but like, I think it, I think it can work the other way too, but I, I think that that's actually really interesting because say you make the decision that you're going to break up with this, you know, you're going to break this parasocial relationship up, right? You're not going to be a part of that relationship anymore. But that doesn't mean that other people aren't going to be in parasocial relationships with that person. Mm -hmm. So then there becomes that whole like discomfort of, well, I'm not in a relationship with them anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we don't get the, we don't get, we don't have control over if other people have, um, parasocial right. relationships with those people, those things. Mm-hmm. Right. That's fair. Yeah. The conundrum. So that's that, my friend. Celebrity. Oh, so, and um, the, I think the uh, the last thing, um, negative thing, is it can create a bias in reality. So, like, if our um, if all of the media that we consume is um, dominantly male, dominantly white, dominantly you know something other, it can create this um, uh, idea of that's what reality is. Um, so, like, it's that's why it's really important that we have a very diverse um, range of uh, media, so we have a a, a more re- real concept of what reality is. Mm-hmm. Right. But what we have uh, available to us as options are much more uh, authentic. As opposed yeah. to the bubble um, right. that is created. Yep. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I, I see that every now and then on social media that I'll be like, what is that? Because it'll be something random that someone else liked or shared. And I'll be like, I'm not quite familiar with that. And then you find yourself possibly going down a, a rabbit hole. You're like, oh, there's a whole world of something I don't know anything about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing on TikTok. Like, you know the algorithm creates a stream for you that you will likely interact with. Um, and then sometimes you're like, where the, what, what side of TikTok am I on now? Jesus. Well, I mean, th- but that's what social media is geared to do. Like the a logarithms like, Oh, you watch this. You must be interested in more of this. And then it gives you more of that, or it suggests more of that, or, you know, it's like, um, and and there is a key difference between like a like a passing interest and an authentic like yes I want more. As long as the like button is taken into account, all the ones that you're actually is actually included in the algorithm. You know, like if you like comment and subscribe on this YouTube video right now. Yep. Then you'll see more of it. But that's not always the case, though. I know. That's what it should be, though. Right. Like, like, uh, like that. I agree. Like, I think we should be opting into the things as opposed to constantly being solicited. Well, then with stuff. Uh, but then a lot of people just don't hit that like button. They watch video and be like, oh, that's a cool video. But they don't hit the like button. They didn't take a call to action. Yeah. I mean, it. what's that? But they viewed it. Yeah. But. They didn't hit the like button. Just because you yeah, do something doesn't mean you liked it. Right, right, right. Well, there is a presumption, I think, that if you didn't view all of it, then you must not have liked it. And mm. that's not always the case. Like, you know, people have busy lives. They have to stop. Maybe they had to go to the restroom or, you know, they were, you know, 
on on transportation traveling somewhere and they had to stop yeah. because they, they just to get had the go, thing you know? the thing playing in the background their video ended it went to a different video and instead of going in and changing it they were going to continue with what they were doing or they were using the restroom or something it just played all the way through they didn't right. even watch it or they fell asleep on the couch <clears throat> and then it just kept on our... playing oh yeah our like I've had it happen so many times that I have to now like consciously stop playing Facebook or not Facebook, YouTube. I have to, it'll just keep playing. Like if I don't I mean, you can't turn that off on my phone. I know I'm aware. I just don't. Um, but if I <laughs> like, I've, I've literally turned off like this, um, the TV, but had YouTube still running, not realizing and I would come back in the morning or the next day or something like that and look and be like, where did all these videos come from? <laughs> like, how do I watch all these? Oh. And then I go to right. YouTube and be like, oh, I, there's all these videos I've watched somehow. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm-hmm. Somehow. Now all you need to do right. is stop. Just, yeah, just... I know. Well, and, and then what you can do is go back through your viewed history if you want to take the time and then remove those things. Yeah, you could. Or Because I've done it several times. I'll be like, especially when friends visit and then they're watching on my YouTube <laughs> sign in <laughs> stuff. And then I start seeing these random things appearing as suggestions or whatever. And I'm like, oh, no, what is what is this? Because yep. they're like, well, they'll be like, oh, there's this funny thing. You should watch it or whatever. Look this up. Search for this. Because I have Apple, like, based system stuff. And they show up with Android and they can't immediately connect to any of my stuff. So. Uh, and they're like, <laughs> yeah. I roll. Well, no. And, like, and I don't care. But then the problem is they're like, oh, well, type in this thing or look for this. You no, know, because they can't just cast. You know, uh-huh. or connect to my TV or whatever. You oh. know, so then I have to remember to go back and like remove, remove those things from stuff. viewing history, especially on YouTube, because otherwise it will want me to see more of that. Because it's like, oh, well, you looked at it, and it's like, yes, just because I looked at it doesn't mean I liked it. Hence, there is a like button. Anyways, <laughs> we're just going in a, in a tech a critique circle at the moment. <laughs> anyway, with that being said. So what is the what is the takeaway, Ed, for for people? Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, the main takeaway is just to be mindful of um, the media that you're consuming because that can translate into your other relationships and the real world. Mm. It's very fair. Yeah. It's true. So be careful yeah. when you're watching that porn. Realize that it's porn and it's not always necessarily real. Yes, well, you're on yep. some sites. But Apparently, that like button helps to create <laughs> things, so you're not getting those really twinky guys all the time. <sighs> uh, not yeah. that there's anything wrong with twinky guys. No, it's just <laughs> personal preferences, of course. Unless that's yeah, if your thing. Not, if it's not your cup of tea, but you know, it but could it be. Still keeps. It could. Mm-hmm. Anyway. The algorithm isn't perfect. We could try to teach it, though, to be at least a little bit better. Anyways, that's the need, point. I need... With that, Anything I think that's... else, Ed, for, for folks? Um, yeah, I mean, parasocial relationships can be really helpful and beneficial, but they can also not be. Um, so, you know, again, I think mindfulness is the key here. Um, and uh, understanding you know, what, how this can help you, um, move you towards the person that you want to be. Yeah. That's fair. Very fair. And by that, I think that's the end. Oh, yes. Play ways to contact us. Uh, let us know if you have a parasocial relationship, like our Patreon patrons, um, by either commenting on blog at cubsadlot.com, shooting us an email at cubsadlot at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Just give us a call and just start breathing heavily into it. (laughs) 
Anyways. Okay, okay. for the record, I am not requesting that. The producer is. <laughs> I was also joking. Mm-hmm. So you, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> you can follow us on Facebook, are Twitter, you, and... Are you a clone? <laughs> Bring it back around. You can also comment on our Facebook. Uh, uh, shoot us an at on our Twitter. Or like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to ding that bell on YouTube. Uh, all that comes out live in the appropriate place of the URL. You can also just chat us directly through our entourage chat with a whole bunch of other people at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can also subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're pr- planning to record these shows at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can also get various Cubs Out Loud accoutrement uh, over at Zazzle, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Things like, uh, you know, now that we're sicky, here's your cookie, a handy towel, uh, various consents of my four play shirts, which were designed by Smashy. And you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. We also like to thank our uh, parasocial uh, relationship uh, people over on Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you could also have a parasocial relationship through Patreon if you would like money coming to us because you love us, right? Right. Uh, if you'd like to just send us a donation, another way for your, to enhance your parasocial relationship with us, uh, over at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Didn't think I would tie all of this to the actual show, did you? Also, another way you can have a parasocial relationship is to uh, comment and, and 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 rate our podcast over on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Audible, basically any other podcasting platform. If we're not there, please let me know, and I'll see. Make try to get us on there. Uh, and you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set Box Puppy Box Cub Box something or other. David. <laughs> I didn't think I broke them. Yeah. Oh, God. Anyway, <laughs> if you wish to get sent, <laughs> um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub 79 That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most beer related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as gabber 73 Ed, if people would like to get in touch with you, how could they do that? Sure. So uh, if you want to find me on Facebook, I'm on there as Edward AC. Um, My business website is eactherapy.com. You can find me on TikTok as dr.unicub79. I'm also on Instagram as dr.unicub underscore sexbrainwizard. Um, and then if you want, uh, to see me on the tweets, um, Eddie H. Cook is my safer work and, uh, dr.unicub after dark is, um, where the naughty content lives. Mm. Naughty. So naughty. So (laughs) naughty. And with that, thank you everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.